Hello, my name is Peter Parfitt and welcome to Newbrook Workshop. We're in a new location. I haven't got a workshop yet. A garage is about to be converted. But I thought I'd just show you this dining room table which I've made and there are a pair of matching benches to the same design. I'm going to run you through a very short sequence of how I went about building this. Basically I've made this using the Festival Domino uh, a few other tools here and there, a bit of help from a friend of mine, and I've finished it with Osmo, of course. Now behind me, I've got the, the legs or support frame of my new dining room table. It's all solid oak, and uh, it consists of what I call feet, legs, and supports, and there's a brace here. Now all of this is pretty solid. This alone uh, weighs quite a bit. Now if you now imagine there's a top that goes on this which is 42 millimeters thick, uh, it's 1100 millimeters uh, wide and it's 2200 millimeters long and two grown men find that extremely difficult to lift. So there's the structure. I've got a pair of 14 millimeter by one 100 millimeter dominoes at each of these ends here. And for the uh, legs where they're joined to the feet and where they're joined uh, to the support, across there, there are three dominoes and they're each 100 millimeters long and they're 14 millimeters thick dominoes. There are little pads on the end of these feet, uh, which are about 12 millimeters thick. And they're there uh, really to give it a bit of style and that sort of classic look. And I've made a pair of benches, there's no top on this at the moment, and it mimics the same style. Uh, you've got legs, you've got uh, these uh, feet, you've got the support here, and you've got the brace. And there are a pair of these benches. And the idea is that you would have benches for children on one side, a pair of them, or maybe at each end, and then ordinary chairs around the rest of the table. Well, thanks for that, Jake. Absolutely fantastic. That's all right. That's all your timber for the new dining room table. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, take care. And you. Cheers. Bye, Bye then. And notice how useful the MW1000 is. I'm going from 900 millimetres height here. 900 millimeters height here and I'm now able to move this around so that this rear end now comes back onto my mobile bench. Uh, I'm using a uh, cascomite glue uh, for all these edge uh, glue ups. Uh, one other thing you may notice is I'm using biscuits for uh, lining up the boards this time. Uh, that's only because I had a friend of mine help me uh, get these jointed edges absolutely perfect on his great big long jointer and he said well I'll put the biscuits in for you as well so I then had to say um, I don't have a biscuit jointer can I have some biscuits as well as you know, so there we go so hence uh, biscuits wasn't that kind of him thank you David now the cask of Mike glue is really the, the right thing to use uh, for doing long jointed edges and I'm putting it on with a brush as recommended uh, my boards are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm on board number 4. Uh, this one down here is 3, so I'm halfway through the gluing process. Just brush it on, and remember, don't put any down into the holes where the biscuits go. The biscuits are floating tenons, effectively. Not quite so serious with the biscuit as it is with the domino. If you're using dominoes, absolutely don't get any glue down there, because otherwise, in time, they can force the glue joint between the boards apart. Now you've got about two hours uh, dwell time for gluing up boards like this. If you were using PVA uh, you'd be lucky to have 20 minutes and by now uh, the two I've already done would have been really going off pretty much. Uh, these, these two pieces actually came uh, as one original piece of rough sawn wood. It was too wide to go in my planar thicknesser, so I carefully cut it through. Okay, so I lost two and a half millimetres of flesh as I did that. Uh, but then I jointed up both sides 
and you can now see it's a pretty reasonable match. So I'm now going to clamp it and I'm also going to make sure it's flat when I'm doing the clamping. And now I'm actually tightening these uh, clamps up quite a bit. Well that's the, the final clamps on there, so I've got uh, four going downwards from the top and equally spaced of course, and then three coming upwards from the bottom. Uh, and that helps to stop it uh, sort of uh, twisting in any particular way. I've given a quick check to make sure it is as flat as could be expected and I'm very happy with that. Bit of glue easing out through the joints, leave that, don't start rubbing it in or trying to remove it. It will come off very easily when it's dry. That's super. So good, job done. Now I want the most perfect cut for these ends of the bench seats and so as this is too wide to go in the capex I'm going to use the TS55. Uh, it's got the 48 tooth blade in it. Um, I've got my top which I created with the path guide system. Uh, my dogs are all set up so I know this is going to be a perfect cut. Now because I'm cutting very near the edge you will see more dust than usual. And I hope you could see just how clean that cut is. It's really, really smooth. Now for the benches, there are a couple of things that you need to note. First of all, the dominoes that I'm using to link uh, the feet to the main leg and the leg to the support are 12 millimeter dominoes, which are 100 millimeters long. I've had to cut some uh, down to that size. I wanted some fairly beefy dominoes for that. There's one thing I need to explain to you about the top here. I'm going to put four holes for screws in here. Now the top is solid oak and it has to have the ability to expand and contract. So the holes for the screws that are going to be holding this in place or holding the top in place on here, um, I'm going to make those quite large. They're going to be eight millimeter diameter holes for the screws. And the screws, therefore, will be able to uh, change their angle because there's effectively uh, a larger hole beneath them for them to move within. So that's the idea. And that allows the top to expand and contract just a little bit. And here, here's one I've already uh, made and it's all glued up. And you can see uh, the holes here. There's a 15 millimeter counterbore, which allows the screw and a washer uh, to go down and that stops the screw going too snugly into that eight millimeter hole which goes all the way through. I've got domino slots here uh, ready to take a crossbar and the tops I've done they're over there behind me. Now I've been very careful to try and hide some of the defects in the wood but there are some which are rather nice and uh, they're quite uh, good to see. However, uh, there was one uh, defect in this piece of wood uh, which uh, I just couldn't get rid of and in the end I realised that I couldn't plane it any uh, narrower. The defect was at this end and so what I've done is I've cut a slice off the end and I've stuck another slice of wood on. Now in order to get the flat surface uh, at an angle here, in order to stick this slice of wood on, uh, I have a, a long wedge which I double-sided sellotaped uh, to this piece of wood and I then planed the end here uh, so that it became flat. I then stuck my 
uh, wedge on and you can see it's slightly oversized and I'm now going to put it through the thicknesser uh, in order to get this absolutely spot on. There's that patch, it's not going to show because it's going to be directly underneath the tabletop uh, but I've now restored the thickness that I needed at this end. So it's now time to start applying the PolyX to the tabletop. Now at the moment I've got the underside uh, upwards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two coats on the underside. Uh, any that drifts onto the sides, I'm just going to wipe that carefully so that I end up with just a very thin initial coat on the ends and sides. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over when that's completely dry and then I'm going to put three coats on the top. Now the moment you start applying polyx to, this is oak, uh, the wood really does start to come alive. Now this is uh, polyx gloss, clear, and the product code is 3011. And I think you can see from what I've done already that this wood, this beautiful French oak, is coming alive as I put this oil on. And it's absolutely lovely. Now Osmo recommend that uh, you just use brushed on coats. And it makes a perfectly good finish. Uh, but having been a French polisher myself once upon a time, uh, I like to build up a finish with a number of thinner coats. But the Osmo recommended method is perfectly good. Uh, you brush on, not too generous, but a, a sensible amount, probably about the amount that I've put on there, uh, and then leave that to thoroughly dry. That first coat will take a little while to dry, uh, but after that, subsequent coats are fairly quick to dry. And then that uh, gets left, and then you just apply a second coat. Now, if you don't need a huge amount of polyx for a particular project, then I really recommend you buy it in the smaller tins. The 0.75 litre tins are really, really useful size, I think. Um, but if you do buy it in the larger tins, like the 2.5 litre tin, uh, then uh, do transfer some into uh, an intermediate vessel so that you don't have a, a whoopsie and spill a, a huge amount. And I do prefer, even when I'm using a smaller tin like this, uh, to tr transfer what I need into a little plastic vessel like this. Uh, and then I think it makes life a lot easier. I think this is the part of any project when wood literally comes to life like this, which is the most satisfying. Uh, you've put all the hard work in. You've really worked hard to produce the most beautiful piece of furniture you've ever made. And then the crowning glory is when you see the wood come to life. Well, I hope that little video sequence gives you an idea of how I went about building the table and the benches. I am producing a set of plans for this. They're quite straightforward and simple, uh, and they're free of charge. In order to get plans from me, you need to send me your email address. And if you do that uh, via YouTube, then an, a comment which comes in on this video with an email address will go into the spam folder uh, so nobody else will see it apart from you and me. I'll then re react to it and I'll then delete uh, that comment. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.